Italian dinosaurs are few and far between. No, not your Uncle Giuseppe. Real dinosaurs. There's two good skeletons and one single isolated hunk of bone. The most complete of those skeletons is the absolutely adorable little Shipionix, which also happens to be one of the most complete and best preserved dinosaur skeletons ever found, with all its ooey gooey guts intact. A brand new paper has belched out a new hypothesis that this little dinosaur and many of its compy brethren are actually the young of bigger predatory species, namely the shark tooth dinosaurs. A teeny tiny fossil of a teeny tiny theropod dinosaur was uncovered from the limey rocks of the Pietra Roja formation of Italy in the spring of 1981 by amateur paleontologist Giovanni Toresco. It was the first Italian dinosaur to be found, and once it was prepared, described, and finally published on in 1998, it became a short-lived media sensation, not for its body, but what was inside its body. The delicate little skeleton, recurved as most nearly complete dinosaur skeletons are after death, contains the mineralized soft tissues, the stomach, intestines, some blood, the esophagus, the trachea, even the poop chute, and some pellets it never managed to get rid of before it perished. Over the years since its discovery and first description, the little fella has been given a lot of attention, including the longest description of a single dinosaur species ever written, published in 2011 by Cristiano del Sasso and Simone Maganuco. In all that work, it was found that the skeleton belonged to a hatchling theropod dinosaur, which was specifically referred to the family Compsognathidae, this being the famous group of athletic, thin-framed theropods of relatively small size and primitive features. Many are small and preserved in spectacular conditions, allowing whole coats of feathers to be preserved in their fossils, showing that they were fluffy, long-tailed animals with thin jaws and snippy teeth. That is, until today. The group known as the Compsognathids haven't had a great stress-free history in the scientific literature. They are traditionally thrown into a basal or lower branching position in the Silurosauria family photo album. The Silurosauria is one of a few major branches of the two-legged, usually meat-eating theropod dinosaurs. The other major groups being the Ceratosaurs, including the Ceratosaurids, Noasaurids, and Abelosaurids, the Megalosauroids, including the Megalosaurids and Spinosaurs, and the Carnosaurs, including the Allosaurs and Carcharodontosaurids. The Silurosaurs also contain just a hell of a lot of different types of theropod dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurs, Dromaeosaurs, Therizinosaurs, Alvarosaurs, Ornithomimosaurs, Ovaraptorosaurs, Scansoriopterichids, the Troodontids, and of course, all living and extinct birds. Phew, I'm gonna go grab a drink real quick. That was a lie. You want one? There's a lot which can be known for sure about all these groups, and a lot that remains on the table, so to speak. A bunch of the groups made up of fossil scarecrows and paper megaraptorans can be easily moved around depending on what tech you use and how you use it. These groups are just fragmentary beasts with all their gaps filled in with better known critters. Not the case for the Compsognathids, but there's a catch. Most of the critters labeled compies are known only from immature specimens, they all the baby. Since they're mostly immature, their exact adult state is unknown. For this reason, many paleontologists have worked off the hypothesis that the adults were larger, less babified versions of their young counterparts. This led to a grouping of these guys as a wastebasket where all theropod dinosaurs with similar anatomy would be crumpled up thrown in and forgotten about. It didn't matter that many were immature specimens, for some of those specimens resembled the babies of confirmed adult or near-adult Compsognathids, like Compsognathus itself, or Sinocalyopteryx. But what about the baby specimens? In comes the often controversial yet hardworking Andrea Kao and his blog Theropoda. Kao thinks that the Compsognathidae is paraphyletic, 
That means that all the critters put in there are not natural. They don't form a natural grouping of ancestors, descendants, and cousins, but rather a bunch of semi-related or unrelated critters that just so happen to share some bits of their anatomy with one another. If this is true, and we'll get to cow's evidence for it in a minute, then what are these false compsognathids? Cow suggests the general body plan of the compsognathids isn't the natural state for the group of animals, but is generally the body plan of hatchling members of the titanurate clade, which includes the carnosaurs, megalosaurs, and silurosaurs. Cow thinks all the groups of dinosaurs near the base of the titanurate tree would have had similar looking babies, making figuring out the relationships between just the bunch of baby fossils pretty difficult. Here are cow's reasons. 1. They small. All compsognathids are pretty damn small compared to all other groups of theropod dinosaurs traditionally thought to be related. They are precisely the dimensions you'd expect of hatchling or very young allosaurs or megalosaurs. Number 2. They from the same time. All known compsognathids are known from a time interval, late Jurassic to early Cretaceous, that overlaps with the early members of the Titanurae. They are unknown from the first half of the Jurassic and last half of the Cretaceous. They therefore disappear with all the megalosaurs and allosaurs. Number 3. They boring. All known compsognathids don't show any unique or derived bits of anatomy. They are all generic theropods without any specializations for anything other than being a generic theropod. If anything, they combine characteristics you see more often in allosaurs and megalosaurs with unspecific traits. You know, no skull ornaments, no weird notches, no huge claws, not even anything specific to catching small prey items. Number 4. They mostly babies. Shipionics is obviously the main example being used in Cow's paper, but there are a lot of other copies known from the remains of Bibis. Juravenator and Scurimimus are just a little bit older than Shipionix at death. The holotypes of Compsognathus longipes and Cynoceropteryx are also immature. The remains of the possible Compsognathids Auroran and Haplochiris are immature. Wachsiognathus, Nequibosaurus, Junmenglong, all youngins. Sinocalyoptrix isn't known from hatchlings, but the holotype is still immature. Dai Long, an early Tyrannosauroid, and therefore not that far removed from the Titanurae and Compsognathidae, is also known only from young remains. It's really weird to find an entire group of theropod dinosaurs known only from immature remains when immature remains are pretty much unheard of or in extremely short, fragmented supply in virtually all other theropod groups. All compsognathids are youngins, and found in rocks that just so happen to preserve things really well. Mighty coincidence that only the young of compsognathids are preserved in these rock deposits, but not the young of other dinosaur groups. Cow argues that no single one of his reasons would support his hypothesis, but altogether they make a compelling argument. He then goes on to provide two versions of his hypothesis. A. All compies are immature specimens of large titanian theropods. And B. Some compies are real compsognathids, and others are the youngins of large titanurans. So what's the deal? Why hasn't this been found out before? Cow reasons it has to do with how researchers have been tallying up the characteristics observed in the bones of the compies all these years. They've been chalking them up as adult features and comparing them to all known adult features of other theropod dinosaurs. This would create a huge bias, if all or some of the compies are actually young members of different groups of theropods. Since many of the known compsognathid fossils are immature, there should be a way to account for those immature little baby faces. Another issue in past researchers' work is that they took only the single specimen into account when trying to code them into the theropod family tree. Instead, the entire group should be coded into the family tree as immature specimens. Cow accounted for this in his analysis and found that his hypothesis was accurate. Juravenator and Scurimimus were found to fit into the Megalosaur clade, while Shipionix better fit into the Carcharodontosauridae group, which gave us the behemoths Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus. How can that be? Little Shipionix is a shark-toothed dinosaur? The size difference seems incomprehensible. 
the less than a half meter Shipionix came from a 10 meter plus Carcharodontosaurid? Well, Cow offers up some direct evidence that Shipionix is most likely a shark toothed chick. Here is the maxilla of an allosaur, the bone that makes up the front of the upper jaw. It's small and just a single bone, but everything about it puts it in the allosaur category. It comes from late Jurassic Portugal, which puts it in the right time and even the right region. The allosaur bone matches the same bone in Shipionix pretty perfectly. Obviously, the teeth are a bit different and no one's suggesting they are the exact same animal, but the same type of animal. It was said by the descriptors of Shipionix that an estimated adult size could range up to 2 meters. This was based on remains of Sinocalyoptrix, as they are much larger than most other compsognathids, but still represent immature animals. This is nuts though, because an egg that would hold a Shipionix sized or even slightly smaller embryo would be way too big for an animal of 2 meters. It would be a kiwi sort of situation, which is extremely rare in the animal kingdom, so it would be unlikely to occur over an entire group of dinosaurs. On top of that, the bones around the cloaca are close together and fused in non-avian dinosaurs, but are open in birds, making a large egg a lot easier to plop out for our feathery friends, but not so for the extinct non-avian varieties. Shipionix as a hatchling allosaur brings the size proportions of egg to adult into the average range known for Mesozoic dinosaurs. Cow was confident that he could nitpick Shipionix into the Carcharodontosaurid group by looking at the fossils. He'd already done so with his family tree analysis. Here's those jawbones again, one from the hatchling allosaur, an adult allosaur, Shipionix, and an adult Carcharodontosaur. See this hole here? It's huge in the hatchling and adult allosaur, but small in Shibionix and the adult Carcharodontosaur. See this long stretch of bone here? It's long and smooth in Shibionix and the Carcharodontosaur, but boxy and squared off in the hatchling and adult allosaur. These characteristics and more distinguish the bones of Shibionix from the allosaurs and groups it together with the shark-toothed dinosaurs. So our little Italian friend was really a giant. The shark tooth dinosaurs, or Carcharodontosaurids, were adapted for slicing huge chunks off of still-living prey, like the sauropod dinosaurs. They were common all across South and North America, through Europe, Asia, and Africa. They had some cousins that got stranded on Australia too. They were wildly successful animals, but started to decline by the mid to late Cretaceous in all of the areas where compsognathids are found and found to disappear from the fossil record. Is that it? Is that everything? Case closed? Well, as good as Cow's reasoning is, and his work to prove that reasoning, it's got some flaws. Namely, this isn't a peer-reviewed publication. His method for finding the characteristics is a little iffy according to other researchers. The conclusion is far from concrete. Be skeptical, my friends. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.